Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got two replays in the tier 8 tech tree French Wheelie Boy light tank, the Panhard AML Lynx 6x6, or just the Lynx, really, because it makes it easier. This is actually my favourite Wheelie Boy in the entire line. I don't think it's better than the EBR75, the premium tank, but I like this tank because of the Alpha. 240 Alpha is really satisfying, and it's just been a blast to play for me, to be honest. I've just really enjoyed playing it. It hits pretty hard. The DPM's not great, but the mobility's pretty decent. The camo's great. Like I say, I think the premium's probably better because of its ability to move backwards as fast as it goes forwards, and just it's fairly similar camo and pretty much the same view range. I do think that tank's better, but this one for me was just more fun because of the alpha. It felt like I was hitting tanks for a fair amount. I didn't feel like if I missed one shot with the, you know, the double shot that I was wasting time. The penetration is pretty much the same as the premium as well at like 180, I think it is, with like 220 20 odd on the pen, which is pretty decent. So yeah, so like I say, it's got 310 meters view range, which is a massive downside, but that's something that's pretty common in the entire line, to be honest. It's just the poor, poor view range. But like I said, the velocity on these standard rounds are really good. The alpha is pretty nice. The penetration is decent for a tier 8. It's not bad. And I just had an absolute blast to play. It's also fairly small. Like, the EBR-75 is a fairly large tank to hit. This is a fairly compact vehicle, so it's a bit harder for people to hit when you're run running around like a lunatic. But yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed this tank. So, what do I run as a crew? I run the same as all the other wheelie boys, and I run Born Leader, Rapid Reload, Sixth Sense, Situational Awareness, Camouflage Expertise, Muffled Shot, Steady Aim, Snapshot, and Run and Gun. Now, I run all the gun perks, because, well, you want to make the gun accuracy better, and I run the camo perks, like Camouflage Expertise and Muffled Shot, to make the camo that is on this tank as fantastic as possible. I do run... <laughs> oh, God, that poor Highland Hunt. <laughs> yeah, I do run... Vents, optics, and camouflage net. Therefore, my view range is as good as possible, and the camouflage is going to be great. Now, I had dropped general mechanic for snapshot. If you saw the first Wheelie Boy video I did, which was the EBR 75, I ran general mechanic to make sure that I got the wheels repaired quick enough if they got damaged. So that, you know, if I got shot and the wheels got damaged, I wasn't left for dead pretty much. But after playing them for a wee while, I realised that when I was getting shot in the wheels, generally I was pretty much dead, or I, I'd get shot, the wheel would get damaged, and then I'd just use my repair kit. By the time that I'd probably end up with my wheel damaged again, I had the, wheel, the repair kit back. So it was kind of like, oh, you know what? I'm using this gun a lot when I'm on the move, and I'm using it in the cruise mode. So, you know what? We need to make the gun accuracy better while we're turning the turret, because most of the time we're on the move, we're going to be rotating around someone... The turret is going to be moving, which means the accuracy is going to be worse while turning the turret. So using the snapshot perk to make the gun handling better while turning the turret was something that was more valuable than just having general mechanic. And since they've actually, well, I think it was in the patch on Tuesday, they introduced a new skill called wheel mechanic, which repairs the wheels in like 15% or something like that. I can't remember. 15% quicker, I think it was. Now, you could take wheel mechanic if you get annoyed by getting your wheels shot and then having no mobility whatsoever. But like I say, usually for me, it was like, okay, my, my wheels have been shot, I've lost my mobility, but I'll just repair it with my repair kit. And then the next time it happens, I'm pretty much dead anyway because we have not very many hit points. But yeah, I've really enjoyed the Lynx. It has been an absolute blast to play, to be honest. And it was my favourite in the line, definitely. So in this game on Kasserine, we've managed to get 2.7k damage. We've run around. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering why the, there is no sound, it's not your headsets, don't adjust your TVs, don't adjust your YouTubes. It's because for some reason there was a weird glitch with the audio on this replay that just meant that there was a all the time. And it was really, really irritating. <laughs> so I've just cut the audio on the replay down to the bare minimum so that you don't have to suffer that. So yeah, we're on Kasserine and we've just abused a poor light tank with HE. Because that is the one thing, again, obviously this tank has absolutely fabulous HE for a light tank. 75 pen 
And that just means that when you are brawling with other light tanks, just put the HE in and brawl away and you will slap them for over 300 quite easily. And it's really quite nice. So we've got up against this final tank. It's an A44. We get one shot in and unfortunately we can't quite get the shot to finish him off. We finished with 3.9k damage and 67 assistance because we didn't really spot couldn't really spot much when the others were being active. And we finished the game with seven kills, let's say, 1833 base XP. Just imagine if we reloaded half a second quicker. Maybe if we'd had Rammer, we could have got Radleys there, but it is what it is. Sacrifice that DPM to try and make it so that I can at least play the light tank role a little bit better if I have to. Because, yeah, vents, I think, it, I think with the vents, I noticed it adds something like 20 meters view range, which... You might think, oh, 20 meters isn't that much. Every little helps, especially when you're blind as a bat. Especially when you're blind as a bat, every little helps. But obviously, because this tank has such great camo, you can actually get quite quite close to people anyway without being spotted, and that's a pretty handy thing in itself. So we're on the second game, and we're on Arctic region. And we are going to activate the rapid mode so we can get our top speed, and we're going to try and push into a position where we could try and spot their Sniper Hill. But before we get there, it's like, oh, hello, Mr. EBR Hotchkiss. Oh, it's the Tier 7. Well, let's load the HE. Get it slapping in. Well, okay, of course, we missed the first one. And this is the Wheelie Boy Jewel. And it's like, hello, Mr. Wheelie Boy. Oh, you straighten up. I will pop my HE round in for 308. And the Ariete finishes him off. But that's, you know... Obviously, it would have probably been better to just keep the APCR in and then go for the HE. Because the APCR obviously has better shell velocity, which means it would have been easier to hit that guy with the first shell. But it is what it is. And you see what happens, though, when you do hit them with that shell. 300 is, is a pretty meaty roll. We go for the HE pen on the T-37. Unfortunately, only hit for 57, which is sad. And I kind of push over here to see if I can get a shot at that wheelie boy that was there. Then this VTU gets spotted. And it's like, well, I'll pop a shot with the HE because he did turn his turret and that thing has no armor. Unfortunately, it didn't pen it. As you can see from the top right, we only did about 150 on damage. But, yeah, it was fine. It was worth the risk. We still got the HE in, though, because of the wheelie boys. We go for the shot on the AMD. And there you go. Another big 300 shot on that guy. And the thing is, you got you got to remember, right, is when you're shooting the other wheelie boys and other light tanks generally with the HE, you're doing some pretty big module damage. So, because well, that's just what HE does, isn't it? So you're getting some nice big hits, 330. Look, like this is this is why I have the HE in. Obviously, it can let you down where you might hit it and just do like 20 damage because it just RNG says lol. But for the most part, when you actually hit them, you're gonna do. Uh, dem point and case and point and demonstrated perfectly there. 13 damage because I hit his wheel. But yeah, you know, like you do a significant amount if you do pen it and it's well worth loading these rounds. So I keep the HE in again because it's like, okay, this T37's moving. And it's like, hello Mr. T37, I am your death. Maybe not because I don't pen it. And it's like, ah, oh, thanks RNG. That went well. But we're going to go after him. We slap the HE round in and we keep moving. Because that is one thing I like to do when, I, when I'm when i in these wheelie boys. Is if I get a tank that's isolated in terms of a wheelie. Get the HE in. Go after him. Try and remove them from the game. Because if you, even if it's a normal light tank. Getting rid of the light tank is helpful for me in this wheelie boy. Because my ability to do my scouting role is hampered by the enemy light tanks. And the fact that they just have just pretty, you know... Very similar camo to me and way better V-Rangers. So they will always spot more than I will. And also they will spot, outspot me by a mile. So I'll, they will spot me way before I spot them. So this is where our camo and the lack of V-Range for that tier 6 comes in. Because we have better V-Range than the tier 6. And fairly similar camo. But because I have, by the way, absolutely fabulous drive in there. Physics at its best. One wheel hit the rock and it just rode up. But anyway, yeah, because I have better camo and better view range, I could actually outspot that wheelie boy. And unfortunately, we didn't, I think we got one shot until maybe we missed. It is what it is. He's still roaming about. And it's like, well, I want to get rid of you. So we're just going to get the shots in. Keep hiding behind this rock to keep us safe from what is on there. Sniper Hill, which is a Black Prince for some reason. And we do get a nice shot into him. Now we've got the IKV. We crest the ridgeline, auto-aim the shot to try and get it in, but unfortunately miss it, which is sad. 
We do then get hit by, I think, the Black Prince. We get a nice shot auto aimed as we're moving around into the IKV. Because I want to get rid of this TD in front. I, ju I just want to get rid of this guy, basically. So I'm angling for the shot there. Unfortunately, he moves forward just as we get into a good position. The Black Prince hits us again, which is very sad. Then he hits us again because, yeah, it's just what tanks do on the move. He thankfully misses us, though, with the final shot, and we get unspotted. I switched back to the cruise mode from the rapid mode because I was using that rapid mode to evade. And therefore, I've got better accuracy to auto-aim the shot straight into that Black Prince. He misses again. And I'm just going to try and get this shot into the back end of him, which we do manage to get, which is quite nice. But then I realized, oh, there's a T-54E2 there. Okay. Uh, thankfully, he didn't notice me in time. He is looking this way, but then he looks away. And this is where the penetration of the APCR over distance is going to be a big problem. Because over this range at 500 meters, I think we've only got about 140 pen, something like that. Which is really going to struggle with this tier 8 heavy. As you can see, we're looking for the penetration indicators. And it's yellow pretty much at his front and orange in other places. And it's like, okay, I'd, I know I'm going to struggle to pen some of these places. But like, even the side of his turret at this range, I just cannot pen... Which is really kind of annoying and really awkward. I really should have just loaded premium to be able to get good shots into these, this guy to be able to make sure I'm going to pen it. There, there we go. We are finally learning from our mistake and loading it in. He gets spotted up. We get a big shot into his side for 250. He's going to be finished off by me next round probably most of the time here. And we do finish him off. So now that's that threat gone, there's the Black Prince there that I'm watching. And I, I think this bit, I get a little bit confused because I, I probably get a little bit distracted by what their team's doing. So I'm watching on the map that tank, heavy tank down there at G7. And I'm thinking, right, okay, so wait, where did that Black Prince go? Obviously that Black Prince is in that dip on the left, but I've had a massive brain fart. And I'm like, where did the Black Prince go? Well, he can't be that quick. And it's like, oh God, he's there. Of course he is. He gets a shot into us. And it's, it's one of those moments where you do have a brain fight. You think, wait, where did the Black Prince go? Oh my god, how has he gotten away from me? Realistically, yeah, he, he was still in that dip. But this light tank has gone all in on him. It's like, well, okay then. I will help you, sir. We've got the Alpha to be able to finish him off, which is great. We'll finish off the Black Prince. We're up to 4.1k damage, which is really nice. And we did get shot at by something at F87 or probably at G78 which we know was probably that heavy tank that was spotted at G6. So I'm thinking, well, okay. I know there's some tanks at C8 in their sniper spot on their base. And it's like, okay, so there's the Barracuda. I'm not going to be able to get a shot at this guy from here. What do I do? What do I do? I'm low hit points, right? I'm probably going to get one shot by everything I'm going to see. I get spotted. And it's not the Barracuda. The Barracuda did not see me. And it's like, okay, what what saw me there? It's like, was it the Hellcat? I don't think it was. I think there's something probably up on that ridge line. So I pop a blind shot. Hit it. Because we knew there was a TD up there. And it's like, well, I got spotted. And there was nothing in the position where I thought I could get spotted by. And in fact, it probably was that IKV parked up in that bush that spotted me, to be perfectly honest. But because I knew there was a TD in the sniper spot, it was like, well, I'm spotted as I'm going past that area. And I didn't spot it. So it's probably a very stealthy TD. So you know what? I'm just going to pop a blind shot at it. Unfortunately enough, we, we hit the blind shot, which is quite nice. It's always nice when that comes off. So now I'm going to reverse into position to get the shot in to finish off that IKV. We'll finish him off. And now we're going to sort of try and run away. I don't know why I sort of hesitated a minute there. I think it was possibly the IKV made me hesitate that we know went that way. And now we're getting shot out quite quickly by something. And I think it's D25. I, I, believe I, I believe it's D25 that's in their sniper spot that I hit. So we sort of slow down, get the aim in, get a nice shot into the back of the IKV. And now we're going to drive up behind where this IKV is. Because I'm kind of anticipating that maybe this guy isn't going to expect me to drive up from behind him to get a shot in. He's possibly expecting me to come up from in front of him at B4. So I'm like, please don't be looking my way. And, yep, yeah, he was looking the other way. Possibly running away that way, I don't know. Or just expecting me to maybe turn up that way. But we get 5.2k damage. We finish off that IKV. And now we're in a situation where we're still five tanks. We've got five tanks. They've got four. We know where the Barracuda is. He is down the eight line, like G8. And I'm thinking, right, 
I can get into a position at D7, 8, get shots at the Barracuda and get shots into his behind and stay safe from whatever is on their sniper hill. And that way, if they want to shoot me from the sniper hill, they have to overexpose themselves. So we get up here, we reverse over, because obviously we can reverse over pretty damn quickly, uh, but we can pull away even quicker from the front. Get an auto aim shot into the back end of that Barracuda and finish him off. Now we're up to 5.5k damage. This Hellcat's going in, being gone in on by this light tank. And it's like, well, I really have to be careful because... I don't want to get shut down at this point. We're at 5.5k damage, which is really great. This Hellcat we can just see, so we get a nice shot into him. We know where the medium tank is on the enemy team. He's at H8, and we know that the E25 is just above. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run around this way to C7, but then as soon as I get unspotted, swivel, swivel, come back the other way. Because, you know, we're just going to make it the master of subterfuge. I hope I said that word right. We're going to make the master of it anyway. We, we're making him think we're going the other way. And it's like, no, I'm not going that way. I'm actually coming back quicker than he might expect. Coming this way to get him. So I'm going to reverse up this slope. Now, possibly reversing up the slope might be a bad idea. Because actually, I think he will see my back end way before I'll see his front. But fortunately enough, we spot him. He doesn't react quick enough. And we finish off the E25. Then we get detected again. It's like, what? Oh, there's the medium. Okay, we get a nice snapshot into him, and it's like, please don't kill me, please don't kill me. Rapid mode engaged. Speed, speed, speed. Out we go. 6k damage now. We swivel around, because it's like, is this guy chasing me? I don't think he is. I can use these ridge lines to duck, dodge, dip, dive, and dodge. And bob and weave to try and spot him. We spot him. We try and pop a shot into his turret, but unfortunately miss. I can't sit around to aim to get the shot in properly, because he will most definitely snapshot me, as everybody does these days. So we can't play that risk game. I've just got to wait now for my peeps to come and join me here, because obviously, if I go in one by one, he can finish me off, then he could kill the TD, then he could kill the heavy tank. We go in one by one, that's a way to die, and way to lose this game. But now we've got friends coming in, it's like, okay, now I can move in. There's the IS-3 over there and the TD, and it's like, right, okay, they're going in on this guy. I can now move, make my move and go in. I probably should engage rapid mode to possibly get there a little bit quicker, but I don't. It's what it is. The IS-3 shuts down the TBP VTU. And we finish that game with a nice total. We finish with the victory. Eight kills, 6k damage, 2.3k base XP. Ace Tanker, Devastator, Radley Walters, High Caliber, Top Gun, 2.3k base XP. A really, really nice game for the Lynx. Probably the one I enjoyed the most out of the entire line. It's definitely a lot of fun. The 240 Alpha is great. The mobility is decent. The camo is great. It's a pretty decent light tank. So as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. A great success!